Hey, look at that. It's the Jeep. Hey, look at that, it's me. I know you don't get to see this wonderful face that often, but you know, you're looking for that guy over there. So, uh, it's cold out. It's January and it's cold out, but where's the light? Where's the sun? But here we are, 15,000 subscribers. I can't believe it, man. 15,000 people want to see me work on this fucking thing. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That is pretty freaking cool. So, uh, yeah. I just wanted to say thanks, because uh, I think that's really awesome. This channel, I don't really put a lot of effort into, you know, like, gaining subscribers and making sure it's the most popular and stuff like that. I just work on this pile of crap, and people seem to like it, so that's cool. I get to be myself, I don't have to be, you know, politically correct or worry about, oh, is this going to do this, that, or the other. I don't really care. It's it's really for me, you know, I, I enjoy making the videos and it's nice that you guys enjoy watching the videos. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, 15,000 people like watching this friggin' six-year-old project turn into something, you know, that's a lot bigger than it was when we started. So I just wanted to say thanks. That's, that's really cool. So I guess since we're here, it is the new year. So happy 2019, everyone. That's pretty friggin' cool. So, uh, I guess this is a good time to talk about where the channel is going and, uh, you know, just what's going on because, you know, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm more aware than anyone because I got to edit the freaking videos that content lately has, you know, pretty well sucked. It's, it's not been super interesting. It's not what everyone's come for or subscribed to. And believe me, I, I understand. I'd love to have exciting content, you know, things that you guys like. Um, you know, engaging stuff that's actually interesting, but we're starting to get to an impasse where <laughs> interesting videos are hard to come by. Uh, if you check the, uh, the mods playlist, I've only had a good mod maybe once a month, if that, and sometimes there's very large gaps in between. And that's because, well, look at the thing. It's, it's been through six years of building and modifying and fixing and working on and there's not a whole lot left. It's lifted. It's got tires. It's got lockers. It's got a fairly decent drivetrain. You know, the inside is uh, fairly decent. The engine is pretty decent. There's not a whole lot left. And that's kind of the problem that we're at. If, if you've been uh, watching the Moab series, <laughs> you know, that was like a huge test of this thing to see what it could do. And, uh, you know, it did, it did enlighten me. We learned about some downfalls of the way that this is set up. Things that could use some work. And that's always good for videos. So, uh, yeah, I guess I'll just talk about that a little bit. Um, you know, since we did hit a nice milestone, I would like to do a walk around of this thing. So, uh, if there's anything in particular that you'd like me to go over, I think it's finally time, you know, after six years, <laughs> that, uh, you know, I actually give it a, a full, uh, you know, walk through this thing again, because things have changed. So yeah, we'll do a walkthrough, and um, if I can get enough content, I would like to make a full video just on um, things that need work, you know, what Moab teached me, because there are things that need work. But uh, yeah, definitely number one, it sits too high. This thing is floppy in the front. <laughs> You know, when you're trying to drive this thing and just go over obstacles and things, there's too much lift. And I don't really like it. That's that's too much of a gap. Um, I could definitely drop that at least, at least an inch. And uh, I want to do some proper bump stops. That way we stop eating up the fenders and the flares and all that. Uh, the back, I'm not too sure. It's, it's, not, it's decent in the back. If I could drop it maybe a little bit just to match, that'd be cool. Because right now we're sitting at like... <clears throat> Hell, five and a half to five inches of lift on 35s with cutout flares. I could fit 37s, you know, and bump stop it and probably be fine. And that's been the other thing. Do I lower it or get bigger tires? But I really like these Cooper Discoveries. And they still got a fair amount of tread left on them. So I'm not sure. The problem is they don't make this tire in a 37 on 15 inch rims. So I'd have to get different wheels or go with a different tire. You know, everyone would love some um, some of them beautiful trepidors, you know, them sticky traps, but 
I don't know what they're gonna do on the road. This isn't a daily anymore, you know, that's, that's what the Civic is for. So when you see, you know, videos of me working on this crap, it's just to make sure I can get to work. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I'd want to drive traps on the street, you know, because I do like to drive this on errands and just have some fun with it, but I don't want to wear out the tread uh, just driving around on, on the street all day because New Jersey kind of sucks for wheeling. You got the forest, which is basically, you know, how deep of a puddle can you drive through before you're driving a boat? And uh, the hippies really don't like when you drive through the forest, so that makes it less fun. There's wheeling in Pennsylvania. If you want to drive three hours to go to a park and pay money for a weekend of fun that I've done many, 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 many times, that's starting to get a little old. And on top of that, the group that I was in, it's it's getting a little quiet lately, so there's not as many trips. There's, there's other places to go on trips, but again, it's, it's just, I don't know. Seeing the same stuff for too long gets a little old. Um... But anyway, also, the Jeep has been making a little bit of noise. There was one day I was dri uh, driving it on deliveries, just to take it around, and uh, after a while, it started making a hell of a racket, like a really loud tapping noise, and it wouldn't stop. Shut the engine off, turned it back on, still made the noise, I checked the oil, the oil was fine, uh, the temperature was fine. Didn't overheat, it was, you know, it was perfect. I wasn't even really pushing it, like, yeah, I'd, I'd pushed it a little to take off from lights and things, but it was making a hell of a noise. Have a listen. So yeah, I uh, I don't know what you think of that, but that doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound quite like the piston slap issue that I had before, but it does sound like maybe a rod knock. I don't know if maybe a bearing went bad or something. Uh, I took it on a short trip to get it up to temperature, and it didn't make noise. Someone suggested pulling like a spark plug um, to see if it's, uh, you know, like a rod knock or whatever. So I'll try that if the noise comes back, but I haven't had the noise yet. And I don't really want to drive it around too much if it's got noise, so... Yeah, hopefully, if it's just a bearing, cool, I can drop the pan, replace the bearing, and then we'll have a happy engine again, because, you know, I, I want a reliable engine before I start doing more to this. I'd like to do some tuning, because that, that's basically what we're at at this point. This Jeep is fairly well capable of doing a lot of things that I want to do, so it's really just tuning and strengthening. So things need a little adjustment, or they need strong. Front axle is a big one. I really want to do something about that Dana 30. Here is the problem. So we've got a nice high pinion axle. Wonderful, beautiful Dana 30. It's fairly skookamized, but the weak joint is the joints. The U joints up front are the weak spot, which is fine. That's kind of what you want. But here's the thing. I would absolutely love some RCVs. Just the, the thought of being able to turn the wheel and floor it, and you don't get that wheel vibration from the U-joints, you know, rotating, because U-joints speed up and slow down, and that's kind of part of uh, what causes load issues. I don't want to do Grand Cherokee uh, CVs, because I hear they're absolute junk and fall apart anyway, so... I like to do RCVs. And if I do RCVs, I like to go um, thicker uh, spline count, so that way... You know, we're doing good there, but then the weak link becomes the gear set. I don't want to break gears. That doesn't sound like fun. So, if I'm going to do that, I want bigger gears. I don't really think you can fit anything in a 30. Um, so I'd like to get something that I can trust and sleeve and build and all that stuff. Uh, but, there's not any really easy swaps. You know, sure you could get a uh, an LJ44, but it's low pinion. And, uh, you know, I saw one on the marketplace I was thinking about getting, but the guy talked me out of it. He's like, listen, you're not going to be happy with it because he was breaking gear sets. So, yeah, we can't do that. Uh, if I went with a JK axle, uh, first off, that's wider and different bolt pattern. So all the effort that I put into the rear axle would be sort of wasted. I'd have to, you know, get a... a uh, a JK44 rear to go with it and build both of those up and then get different wheels. Um, but I could go uh, more offset uh, because those axles are what, like three inches wider? So if I get like one inch, one, wait, did that. if I got one inch more of backspacing, then the wheels will only stick out a half inch on either side. That's fine. I'd be fine with a little extra width because that means that you're not so uh, tipsy, got a little more support on the trails, but not so wide that you can't fit through them anymore. 
That was one of the big reasons I didn't want to go with tons. They're so friggin' wide. I don't need wide. I don't want huge, you know, dangling ball sack things getting caught on rocks. I No, I want slim. This only leaves me with one option. Either build JK axles, which themselves aren't super strong, they need a lot of fixing, or keep the rear and go with an aftermarket front. You know, it's big money for a Dynatrack uh, Pro Rock 44, you know. You could get a G2 for a little less, but is it going to be worth it? You know, it's it's going to be a tough one. You know, I don't like spending tons of money, but I also want this thing to be solid. I want to be able to take it to Moab and, you know, give her some skinny pedal and be able to get off stuff and not worry about snapping a U-joint or getting stuck on the trail because the front axle can't keep up. So, yeah, I really, really, really want to do something with the front end. I'm just trying to find the uh, the right axle for the job. Um, besides that, just flexing in general. The frame. The frame is, uh... <laughs> Quotations. Frame. I'd like to strengthen that up. So I think it's finally time for um, some frame fixy stuff. Um, I just want to see uh, if I should fix the uh, the bin over here. So I slammed a tree years ago. So the frame is kind of cocked off to the driver's side a bit. And you can see the, uh, the bumper itself. It's also lifted on the passenger side. So I'd kind of like to get that bent out if I were to uh, frame plate. Uh, rear axle. Leaf springs, not your friend when you're trying to have lots of momentum and skookumness because you get axle wrap. So I want to look into some kind of traction bar or anti-wrap setup so that I can actually do the Moab bump and not just slam my axle into the rocks constantly. So yeah, that is another big thing that I'd like to uh, address is with the rear. I'm happy with the strength, I'm not super happy with the leafs. And I don't feel like dropping another, you know, 1500 on a coil conversion. I don't really feel like I need it. Uh, but yeah, that and also some kind of anti-roll for the body in general. I don't know if I'm going to wheel with, uh, with a sway bar or find a different setup or something. Or I don't know what, but this thing feels tipsy. Like if you watched the last video in Cane Creek, I was driving like a freaking grandma on those trails. You look at the video and you're like, why is this dude going so slow? Dude. When you're inside this thing, it feels like it's ready to tip at any moment. It's ridiculous. I, it's, it's downright scary to drive. <laughs> and, uh, I didn't have my gyroscope with me with the, the REM because they took, um, they just weren't in stock. So I couldn't see the exact angle I was at to be, you know, sure. I didn't want to go over 35, 40 degrees. Um, so yeah, it feels tippy and it's loosey goosey. So we're going to make this goosey not so loosey. So that's the general plan. You know, I just, I, I want to do some strengthening, but it's winter, it's cold. I can't even hold the camera right now, my hand's shaking, about 35 degrees out, and it's only going to get worse. <laughs> so yeah, seeming as I don't have a garage, uh, it's really, really hard to get me outside and work on a vehicle in the cold for hours to make content. Especially if it doesn't need it, you know? If it's not a, oh shit, this thing's broken, I need to fix it now. Eh, that's, that's going to be a difficult one, partner. So I got a feeling it's going to slow down a little bit. I've been keeping up with videos, doing a video every single Sunday for the past couple years now. Haven't missed a single one yet. Might be a few hours late here and there, just because of uh, post-processing, rendering, uploading, internet going out, things like that. But for the most part, I've been keeping up as long as possible, but... I always say this, but it feels like it's starting to come to, uh, to an end, you know? I, I don't know if I can keep up with a weekly update schedule. But that's kind of been the driving force to keep me making videos so often. So, it's, it's a very, very difficult balance. I could start doing different topics. I could move on from, um, from building videos to diagnostic videos. So maybe I could go over, like, how sensors work and circuits. Because that's the thing I've been moving on to now. As a, uh, I'm a nerd, alright? I love nerdy stuff. And if you noticed, you've probably heard a lot about the business I've been working on lately. It's getting a lot more official now, now that I'm making things. I have a store, you know, I got a website. People are interested in the stuff I'm making. And it, it finally, it's really, this year, the 2018, has been a huge, huge undertaking to make this more official. So the stuff that I produce now and build, I want to take seriously. I'm learning more about coding and, you know, getting into the nerdy stuff and finding all the little details. And, you know, I just, 
Renex is such a mystery, and it's so fun to uncover every little weird thing it does. My website is going to be full of all the weird crap that Renex does, because it takes forever to figure it all out. Let's go where it's a little warmer. But yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing now. I've been working at my ass off to try and keep up with demand. And finally, as of last week, I have done it. I finally caught up with Renix uh, with REM orders. I've been behind with pre-orders and just people waiting for years, ever since the V2s came out. It's just been a backlog of people needing product. And finally, after all the work that I've done, I've finally been able to catch up on orders and make them quick enough to keep up with demand. So that's really cool. So now instead of sitting there and building and building, now I can kind of focus on more of the fun stuff, like coding and maybe designing new stuff. But sadly, that's going to be more of what this channel is for now, is uh, the nerd stuff of what I'm working on. So, yeah, we've got REMs. Of course, I want to work on a junior model that's uh, cheaper and uh, simpler, doesn't have all the, the fancy extraneous stuff that peop- that not everyone needs. Because I understand a lot of the stuff in here, you don't need it. And a lot of people don't need fan controllers and all this other crap. They just want something simple, cheap and easy. So I'd like to do that. I know everyone's dying for the clocks, and I'll be working on that soon. I just want to make sure I have these friggin' perfect, because those clocks were a nightmare. And I don't want to have to go down that that again. Uh, on top of that, I've been working on like the fan controllers. And uh, recently I got a transmission scanner now. So this TCU Buddy thing is kind of a prototype work uh, in process. But I'd like this to do more than it can now. Right now it reads the transmission uh, computer as well as the solenoids and the TPS manually. In case you got manual shifting setups. So you can only see what gear you're in and what the transmission's doing and all that crap. But I'd also like this to be more of a shifter setup. I would like to do um, some kind of electrical shifter for auto or semi-auto. Either have like a paddle shifter or a switch or a gear selector or something so you can manually, you know, drive this thing like a manual. Throw it in first, second, third, fourth, hold, you know, whatever. Flip the torque converter on off. Have it in an auto mode. So it'll shift for you, uh, but you can control the shift points. How early or how late it shifts. You know, you can adjust for your gear ratios and your tire sizes so it shifts where it should and things like that. This will take playing around to see just how much I can do, but I'd like to make this a lot more powerful. Uh, on top of adding maybe um, like a temperature uh, reading, so you can see how hot the transmission is if you install a sensor. Maybe a flow meter, if you're interested in that, to see uh, the shifting pressure and what it's actually doing in there. That's something neat. But yeah, I've got ideas for that. So I want to, and, and again, this this should be able to work on, you know, Renex and OBD1 and Probably OBD2, as long as you don't care about throwing uh, check engine light codes, because, again, I don't know all the fancy stuff in there. But we also got these guys, the Trinity the Trinity fan controllers and all the stuff they do. These things are awesome. So, in a roundabout way, this business is about modification and making the Jeep better. Because now, I've done most of the mechanical stuff. Now it's about the tiny tuning, and this is the tuning phase. This thing holds my engine temperature perfect. I love it. It's great. You can keep an eye on it at all times. You can turn it on, turn it off, and it's very adjustable. It, it's, it's what I need. So now the engine temperature has been fine-tuned and is excellent. So I'm very happy with that. I can keep an eye on things, and we're getting there. Lots of code and things I want to do with this so I can keep a better eye on the engine. Um, but yeah, I'd say the temperature is pretty well locked down. And with this guy, I don't know, I'll see what, what's happening and how I decide to design things, but that's another idea. But anyway, we've gotten pretty far. There's been a lot of babbling, so I want to bring it back to the viewers, you know? I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys, you know? All this success and uh, and support I wouldn't have without you guys. So, I would like to thank the with a giveaway. Yes, you heard that right. Oh, let's look at this awkward face again. So, for the giveaway, um, basically, you will have a choice of winning one of these TCU Buddy scanners. So, this will scan anything uh, Renix or OBD1. I'm working on a OBD1 adapter so you can plug it in so it's plug and play, but it'll read anything about your transmission computer. Or, we've got the uh, 
the fan controller. So this is universal. It'll work on any engine, any vehicle, any platform, whatever you want. It's completely universal. You just plug the relays in and all that and you're good to go. Um, so you can control fans and temperatures and stuff. So here is how you enter. Uh, I want you to leave a comment of what you like most about my channel. Like why, why do you come to my channel? What, what makes it interesting? What sets it apart from other people? You know, why do you find it helpful? Uh, either that or maybe share a story of a video that helped you figure out a problem or like what the most helpful video was for you. So, you know, either the two, you know, what you like about the channel or what helped you the most. And uh, what I'll do is I'll go through, I'll wait one week. So next week I will pick a winner um, and it'll go like this. Uh, any comments that I see that I I think would be deserving of it will add to a list and the most fair way I can do it is everyone will get a number and I will put that into a random number generator and I'll have it pick one. So I'll filter it by everyone I think should be a winner and then the winner will be random-ish. That's the only fair way I can do it. I don't want to just pick, unless there's like a very clear winner, I'm going to do the random thing. So, you know, enter for your chance to win. Uh, so if you do win, make sure to watch the next video and I will ask you which one you'd like and uh, we'll send it off to you. So yeah. So the only thing that I ask for this giveaway um, is uh, when I do send one off, if you would be so kind as to maybe show off the product, either on, you know, Facebook or some kind of social media. You don't have to, but it'd be a nice little gesture if you could show it off, just, just so people are aware of it. Because that's the big thing, is I'm trying to build interest and show people, you know, just get the word out. They don't have to buy it, I just want them to know that stuff like this does exist. Um... So yeah, if you could do that, that'd be awesome. Some kind of, even, you know, review, feedback, anything that you, you know, are, you like about it. That's the biggest thing is uh, it's really, it's almost like pulling teeth to get feedback sometimes. So it's always nice to hear what people think. But just as a quick overview, um, this is still some beta software I'm messing with, so don't mind this too much. But we got a fan controller here um, so you can set the temperature that uh, everything works on. Um, okay, so this is in manual mode, so we will go to here, and then go to here, and then go to here, and then go to... So you can set your target temperature for when you want your fans to come on. You've got a delay for how long you want the fans to wait. And then you can also control, you know, like what fans turn on with the uh, air conditioner. Uh, you've got two speed options, so stuff like that. And uh, X run things if you want it to run with the vehicle off. But yeah, this this thing is really cool. So if you want to control your fans, uh, even manually, you know, you can turn your fans on and run them manually. Have them auto, have them off, whatever you need. This thing is really, really freaking cool. I've been putting a lot of work into this. So fan controller if you want to control fans. TCU buddy if you want to read your transmission computer. Don't mind the screen flicker. It only shows up on camera. It's part of the uh, reason I don't like OLEDs so much, but you can see things like uh, your shifter. So if we put this into third, you can see third, you can see first. Sadly, that's all we got there. Uh, we've got our power comfort switch over here, so we can see power comfort. We can see our brake. We can see our TPS. And it's even got check engine light codes. So if we go to the main menu, we can go down to codes and see what codes we have. So when we push this, see we have a uh, throttle position sensor fault high. So that's pretty neat. They come and go. If I flip uh, our solenoids, we'll get solenoid errors. So you can see we have a current fault and a pending fault for solenoid two. So that's really cool. We've got a tooth calculator. So you can see what tooth uh, count you need in your transfer case. That's good if you're trying to match your speedometer. When you, when you do different gears and uh, different tires, uh, it throws off your speedometer. So you add your, you input your tire size here, you input your gear ratio here. Uh, we even have a speed adjust, so when you're driving, you can adjust it so that it's absolutely perfect, and that will affect our reading. So if we go up to the tooth calculator, we'll see you got a different tooth count now. So yeah, if you've been trying to uh, do that, built-in stuff, ain't that fancy. And we've also got manual reading, so if you want to read the, uh, the solenoids manually or the TPS manually, you can wire that up. And the LED mode. So 
If you don't like it, you can turn it off. I only want the uh, malfunction stuff, have that. If you only want the brake stuff, have that. Or the dual mode. So it'll do dual stuff. But yeah, I think that's really cool as uh, just a simple prototype, uh, very fleshed out transmission scanner. So if either one of those suits your fancy, then you can pick. But anyway, um, that's pretty much all all that we have. I just wanted to give out a big thanks, you know, a big shout out to everyone that subscribes and supports and everything. It's It, it does give me a nice warm feeling. You know, I, I like the nice warm fuzzies. Who doesn't? Um, and just to give a, an update of the channel, so you know what's coming, you know, the, uh, it's cold, and I don't feel like we're going on the Jeep, and there's not a ton of things, so there might be a bit of a lull until the springtime when it warms up. I'll be ordering some stuff, I'll be trying to work on my welding skills, because we got some big macho projects to work on. Um, but yeah, maybe we'll do some small stuff, uh, do some poking around, if anything ever breaks, believe me, there'll be a video. Um, I just want to make sure that the engine's okay, and um, stuff like that. So for now, it's going to be a lot of business. If it really dies down, we might not have a weekly schedule anymore. I'll let you know how that goes and what we figure out. It's kind of just been the seat of the pants, so yeah, it's 2019 for you. You're used to looking up and stuff like that. So anyway, ciao. Bye-bye.